Well, it's that wonderful time of year. Eight more days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. I feel like my love for Halloween 3 grows every single year. It was one of those movies I watched as a kid, but never fully appreciated until I got much older. Especially for the fact that it's the black sheep of the Halloween franchise, mostly because it doesn't have Michael Myers as the central villain. Myers is cool and all, but there's something magical about Season of the Witch. Thinking about it, Halloween 3 may very well be my current favorite in the series, especially now that the Myers and Laurie Strode saga is officially over. Speaking of Halloween, like so many of you, I was very disappointed with Halloween Ends. The best part of that entire experience was seeing John Carpenter's The Thing on screen. After all, it's the perfect fall movie. Too soon? Alright, let's restart. Halloween 3 was meant to take the franchise into anthology territory, making each new sequel its own different story. The film I'm reviewing for you now is basically an extension of this idea. Let me tell you about a new short film called The Shed. In The Shed, we follow a woman named Whitney. She's a struggling escort who responds to an ad for a house-sitting gig. Whitney calls the number and meets up with Barbara. Barbara has some business to attend to out of town, so she hires Whitney to watch over, you guessed it, the shed. Sounds easy enough, right? Good luck. God bless. Hey. See you Sunday. As you watch this, I have to mention that the version of The Shed I'm reviewing for you today is not the final cut. I was granted an early look at the film some time ago, so what I watched is technically a first look version of The Shed. The completed version is currently in the film festival circuit. I did enjoy my time with what I watched, so I will be recommending it nonetheless. I mentioned in my review for In Search of Darkness Part 2 that 80s horror films are my personal favorite. That also implies to modern day films inspired by this very decade. The Shed is a 22 minute short film that's very much inspired by the 80s direct to video era. This is something that could easily take place within the Halloween universe. There are some obvious references to those movies, especially with the casting. The Shed's two main players are Stacey Nelkin and Eva Hamilton. Eva is also one of the writers and co directors, and she's terrific as our main protagonist. And I gotta be honest, the addition of Stacey Nelkin is what initially drew me to this film, because she's one of the main stars of Halloween 3. And get this, The Shed also marks Stacey's return to the horror genre. Fuck yeah! The Shed is sort of a home invasion story, where we follow Whitney as she's being targeted by some type of creature as she's house-sitting. It's a well-crafted short film that does an excellent job in paying homage to the films that inspired it. It's well written, well acted, and works wonders with a simple yet effective premise. You're like the third chick to call from there. What? What is she running a halfway house or something? They're coming to get you, Barbara. The shed has Halloween DNA all over it, especially with the musical cues, which sound a lot like the jump scare noises in Halloween 3. <laughs> These jolts of tension work. For the most part, The Shed also has an awesome synth sounding score. Everything about this short film works so well, although I do have one minor complaint. My main issue with The Shed had to do with some of the night scenes. This is a gorgeous looking film, but I think The Shed would have benefited with having a little more light on the night scenes. It gets really dark towards the end. Not like Game of Thrones dark. But it does get to a point where I was having trouble trying to piece together what was happening during the more intense scenes. As I mentioned from the beginning, I watched an early cut of the film, so take these criticisms with a grain of salt, as it's not indicative of the finished product. The Shed is an enjoyable motion picture with excellent music and terrific acting. It perfectly captures that 80s horror spirit with a lovable cast and simple story. The fact that it marks Stacey Nelkin's return to the horror genre is just one of the many reasons to watch it. It was great seeing her act alongside Evil Hamilton on screen. With that said, I would love to see what the Mooncats come up with next. 
If they decide to do another horror project, I would love to see it star Tom Atkins. That would be more than enough to thrill me.